Hey guys, Wade with Texas Long Range Hunting. Today we're going to talk about ballistic solvers or ballistic solution apps or what have you. There are tons of different options available on the market today and we're going to briefly discuss a few of them in the one I use. But before we ever even get into that, we're going to talk about a couple things I feel like you should have before you even try to get into that part of long range shooting and especially hunting. One being a knowledge of what everything means. You should do your own homework, search the interwebs, and figure out what MILS means, what MOA means, what all this stuff means before you even try to go down that road. You need to have an understanding of what everything means. And I don't have time to sit here and describe all the different definitions of all the things I think you should know. You should do your own homework and research and figure it all out for yourself. There's a couple great books out there one by Ryan Kleckner that I would advise most new shooters to get and read. Uh, and there's several others out there. I'm just quickly going over all this stuff, but do your own homework. There's a bunch of different videos on YouTube that talk about all this stuff. That if you give you a greater understanding of what's being talked about or what's being asked for in your ballistics solver app or what it, whatever you're using. Now there's lots and lots of stuff available on the market nowadays that are supposed to be for hunting and everything else. But do your own homework, figure out which one's going to work the best for you, and then research it once you have it. You need to understand how everything works and how to program it and everything else. And one thing I keep seeing over and over on all these Facebook groups and these questions I'm getting asked is, why is it my ballistics app true? Well, that is a multi, multi answer question. The main thing I've seen when I get to see these in person is people don't have the right data input into the ballistics program and they haven't taken the, taken the time to go out to the range and true it up. Now all this stuff has to be trued up. I don't care what ballistics solver you have. Everything is different. Every barrel is a little bit different than the last barrel. You know, it doesn't matter if you're running the latest software from applied ballistics with their custom bullet curves. Your rifle is slightly different. Your bullet is slightly different. There's no way these things are all the same. So you need to true up your data. And we'll get into that a little bit later. But first, let's talk about a couple things I feel like you should absolutely positively have before you even want to go down this road. One being is some sort of Kestrel. Kestrel is a device that will read the wind and all your barometric pressure, your temperature, and everything else. Because when you use these ballistic solver apps and everything else, and you don't have that, there's an option for you to pull off the nearest weather station. And out here in Texas, that could be 30, 40, 50 miles away, and it could be significantly off from what your actual uh, temperature and everything else is at your location. So you need some sort of Kestrel. Now, I, I tell people to get the Bluetooth series Kestrels because I highly recommend the Streelock Pro app because I've had great success with it. Now, this doesn't mean it's the best, it just works the best for myself and my application and I can print up these dope cards and send them out to other hunters I have around me and everything else and I can keep track of everybody's stuff off my phone right here while I'm spotting for people and everything else. But there are several different great ballistic solver apps and devices out there available on the market and I've tried to test a lot of them. Streelock Pro just works the best for me and what my wants and needs. So you got a Kestrel preferably a Bluetooth that'll sync up with the app. And then what do you need next? You need a chronograph or you need access to a chronograph. You can't just go out here willy nilly and take the advertised velocity out the box and go from there. While you can start with that and then true it up and get a pretty good idea, it's a good idea to have a chronograph of some sort to test your ammo in different temperatures. And that goes along with the truing up side of your ballistic solution and I'll show you where you input that on the app here in just a minute. You need to do all the testing in different temperatures because all different powders have different temperature, temperature sensitivity factors and all that stuff plays into the the truing up of your ballistics. Now I don't care what anyone says I've done all the tests there is no powder that is insensitive to temperature air density and everything else like that. So it's imperative in my personal opinion that you go through there in 10, 10 degree temperature swings and test velocities out of your barrel. 
And I think you'll you'll start to see, if you'll start doing that, you'll start to see that these things actually fluctuate, fluctuate quite a bit more than what people believe or realize. And that can make, that can mean a lot of difference when you're going long range. So we got our Kestrel, we got our chronograph. What else do we need? Absolutely need. We need some sort of ballistics app. And we need the knowledge of how to use the app and the knowledge of what everything means and everything else like that. So let's jump over here to the bench and we'll go through my ballistics app and I'll show you a couple things that you might want to know. All right, so let's get started. Hopefully this comes out all right. We're gonna go into our Strelock Pro app or Sterlock, Strelock, I don't know how to pronounce that. It's just the app that I use. So, a couple things to notice that it brings up this page. You're gonna to wanna to click on that and if you wanna set up a new rifle, you hit change rifle. And if you wanna add a rifle, you just click here and then click on that and you replace with data type in your rifle name the twist rate if it's a left hand twist there's probably not very many of you all you out there running left hand twist barrel but they do exist and it will make a difference to spin drift and everything else but we're not going to get into that so the first thing you need to do is choose your scope now they do have a vast amount of scopes available to choose from as you can tell here and there is a search bar up top here to where you can limit that search down and this will help with everything and then there's a spot to do your scope click units but if you choose your scope in there it'll program that for you zero distance scope height that is important be sure and measure that from usually at center of the board to center of the scope and go from there once you have all that program you save it and then you go to the data portion now there is a way to do this much easier if you load your own ammo or you chronograph your own ammo whatever the case may be you go down here and choose g7 that's what i what i like to do and it's not working no oh, there it goes so you have caliber and you have manufacturer let's say we're gonna choose hornady eld match 140 grain it's 264 65 millimeter Yes, we're gonna load that bullet G7. So it automatically programs all this stuff in there off of their library they have uploaded to this app. Now on the bullet speed, the feet per second, here is an important part of what you're gonna be doing. So what you need to do is, you need to make it a point to fill all these in, in my personal opinion. And by doing so at different temperatures, like I said, 10 to 10, 20 at most, degree temperature swings can affect these this ammo dramatically more so than what people believe especially if you're hand loading you're using a relatively sensitive powder it can swing a lot from 90 degrees to 30 degrees so you need to try and fill this up because what it does is it helps create a accurate temperature sensitivity factor which ideally you want that a very low number but it isn't always the case so then you save all that after you've done all your testing and everything else. Zeroing weather. As I talked about a while ago, if you do Metro, which you're probably not going to do in here, I don't have any service. You enable that, you can use Metro, it'll pull off the nearest temperature uh, weather station. Now if you don't have a Kestrel, you can use that, but I, I highly recommend getting a Kestrel or something of that nature. My caster's not on, so it's not going to pick it up. And then you save it. And then zero offset. It gives you the options to set this up. MOA, MRAG, clicks, inches. Left or right, up and down. Be sure and fill it in if you are got a zero offset. Let's say an inch high at 100 yards, what have you. Whatever the case may be. Set all that stuff up. And then you save it. Now, when you're done, it brings you to this page. Now, this may look like a lot, but it's really pretty easy and pretty great little system. You can swap this around and do all kinds of stuff here. Look through all those options. You got a table here that you can set up any way you choose to any distance you choose. 
And then the most important thing I believe, after you've done everything the best of your ability, is come here. Now what this does is it trues your trajectory, which is very, very important. Now you can do it by velocity or BC. And I try to do both and get that thing as solid as possible. Now this is after I've tested the ammo in several different temperature situations. I'll go out and shoot at 500 and I'll shoot at 1000. And it also depends on what rifle I'm running. You know, usually out to 500, it's not that big of a factor, but when you're shooting hunting to 1000, you want everything as true as possible. So, you need to true this stuff up. You need to true this stuff up. And again, you can do it by velocity or BC or both. You need to use this app to the best of your ability to get everything in there just right. Now, most of the time, I put it on BC when I go to 500 beyond because my velocity, I've tested that to muzzle so many times, it's... You know, it's, I've got it for every temperature in between. So I'm more looking at the downrange BC and everything else like that. Once you've done all this, this app is pretty highly accurate. Uh, I have, I've had zero issues out of it. And there's all kinds of stuff you can do with it. As far as your weather and wind, wind speed, wind direction, just click on it. Just put the arrow which way the wind is coming from. All this is important. Wind speed, just input your speed. Again, all this is very important. And when it comes to slope degrees and angles, now if you have a range finder that already gives you shoot to range, it calculates the angle into it. You don't really need to worry about it. I'd set it to zero, but if you don't, you just click on it. And then aim the crosshairs at whatever you're shooting at and hit okay. And it'll give you degree angles and everything else like that. And then we'll come over here to settings. Like I said, you can do all kinds of stuff. You can set this thing up all kinds of different ways, adding wind meters and adding Coriolis effect, spin drift and all kinds of stuff. And you can save it and you can back it up and all kinds of stuff like that. You can create target list, which is good for when you're in a deer stand. You can go ahead and get stuff pre-ranged and all that stuff and just have you a dope card to each location you may think you're shooting at or deer feeders or what have you whatever the case may be and then you got moving targets and blah blah, blah. and it usually pops up a picture of your actual reticle if you choose the correct scope which is pretty cool now if you come over here you input everything and you think everything's correct, you hit calculate and it'll give you down here your vertical and your horizontal and all that good stuff. But if you just want to know holdovers, come right here to reticle and it'll give you the holdovers. And if you come up here, oh, this one don't have it. If you have a scope, it'll tell you what zoom it's on and everything else, what, what these values are at what zoom and all that good stuff like that. It's just a great tool to use in the field and i highly recommend this app after just like any of them you true them up completely and as much as possible and get to the field as much as possible because none of this is going to matter if you don't get to the field and test that now i know this is a very very brief description of things i find important when it comes to setting up your ballistics app uh, for in the field and everything else like that but like I said, there are tons and tons of videos already available on full tutorials on how to do this stuff. These are just things that I find important that everyone should be doing because I keep seeing this same old post to every single group that has to do with long range hunting of any sort. And that's, this app isn't no good. I have great success out of the app because I take the time and just completely true it up, put my time in at the range and then when I go to a field, everything is spot on, ready to roll. Now, that's pretty much it for this video. So get out there and do your homework. And we'll see you guys next time.